her at a club First thing that came to my head was making love But I didn't want to come off like a thug So I just rolled with it, I mean, push comes to shove I got a lot of women in my stable Who love a brother swagger and ain't looking for a label So I just mess with chick under the table And take time to get in the mind and tell five, her fables Four, four, four. So we got more drink, 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 drink. Found out she writes poetry and what she paid to want, want, want. Uh -huh. What's going on everybody? Welcome to a little clip we call the Cypher 360. I am your host, Marcus the Kid Warren, and with me is my man Muff. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, it's been a, we have a you know, we've been on a minor hiatus here, mm -hmm. been a lot going on here. And uh even though it's after the first year, usually this is what is our third annual uh uh year end award. So mm -hmm. we want to give the best of uh, 2013 they're due because 2014 in my opinion promises to be a pretty good uh, year music wise so mm -hmm. uh, you know we just put together a few a few albums that we thought you know uh, that was kind of dope in the last year and we just want to go ahead and let you know where we stand on it stand on it you know uh, first of all before we go any further where can they reach us they can hit us up on our Facebook page we are the cypher crew they can hit us up on our Twitter account we are kid and muff 44 that's k-i-d-d-a-n-d-m-u-f-f 44 on Twitter you can also hit us up Ooh, excuse me, on our Gmail account, which is also Kid and Muff 44. That's K-I-D-D-A-N-D-M-U-F-F 44. Now let's go on and get into it. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, uh, you know what? Start off with the uh, nominees. You can read that off and it will come yeah, with Yeah, sure. We're going to read off awesome the, here. the nominees for the top mixtape of 2013. Top mixtape. And right. just real, real quick about the mixtape thing, just so you guys know, a lot of times, you know, between mixtapes and albums, you know, they're kind of one and the same nowadays. I mean, mm -hmm. it used to be back in the day where mixtapes were mostly just existing beats with guys just spitting over them, mm -hmm. you know, over existing beats. Now people are coming with original material, and a lot of these uh, mixtapes uh, pretty much reflect that. So, as you were. All right, well, we go with first Buster Rhymes and Q-Tip, The Abstract and The Dragon. Excellent mixtape here. Um, <laughs> what you'll find out here is that you have some some old, some unreleased material from both mm -hmm. of them because they both have albums coming out this year. Mm -hmm. Um, also, there will be some old music, you know, mm -hmm. from like in the past. For instance, Scenario 1 and 2 is actually on that mixtape in addition to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody's pretty much looking forward to this mixtape. I was. I thought they did an excellent job of putting that together. All right. We got Rock Marciano, the Pimp Stripes or the <laughs> Pimp Pyre Strikes Back. Yeah. You know, I don't know if he has any Pimp Stripes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the Pimp Pyre Strikes Back. Excellent. Mark Marciano, you know, is part of the UN. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he rocks a lot with Alchemist and those type of guys. Um very, in fact, he put out an album in addition to this. Mm -hmm. um, let me get the name of the album. I just got finished listening to it, but he just put out a new album uh, mm -hmm. right after uh, The Pimpire Strikes Back. And if you want to be truthful about it, it seems like The Pimpire Strikes Back actually should have been his album, and the album that he put out should have been like his mixtape. It, it was like weird. And uh, But this is very good, and I thought this is one of the better mixtapes of the year. All right, why don't we go with Joey Badass. Summer Nights. Joey Badass. That's my dude right there. Joey Badass, young dude, 18, 19 mm -hmm. years old. Maybe he's 20 now. Who knows? But this dude, I mean, he's like a retro throwback MC uh, for a young kid. It's definitely refreshing to hear a guy, um, you know, spit like he does. Uh, Joey Badass, though, real quick on him. He has a couple of beats mm -hmm. on there. He had a, a beat from Premiere on, on that mixtape. He had a mm -hmm. beat from MF Doom, uh, so or Doom, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call him nowadays. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a really, 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 really good album. Really good uh, mixtape. Actually, he actually put out Summer Nights, uh, re-released it as an EP, as opposed to the um, a mixtape that it came out originally. The mixtape plays a little uh -huh. bit better. Cause I think, the, well, I know the mixtape is actually longer. Uh -huh. So, all right. Well, we go with Pete Rock and Camp Low. 80 Blocks from Tiffany's Part 2. Part 2. Part Pete two. Rock, you know, how are you going to go wrong, Pete Rock? You know, uh, uh, Camp Low, the, the, the Tiffany's, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's Part 1 was dope. Part 2 was just as dope. So um, let's go ahead and uh, pick a winner from that one. So. Oh, okay. I guess I'll say it again. No. So in my opinion, uh, the mixtape of the year would actually have to go to Joy Badass. Joey Badass, in my opinion, I think put out the dopest mixtape of 2013. Uh, every mixtape that I just got finished mentioning over here, off the hook, you know, like I said, Brock Marciano, incredible. He has a beat for Mad Lib on that album, too, by the way. Forgot to mention, but Joey Badass, Summer Nights, go back to that mixtape, off the hook. I agree. Okay. <laughs> All right. The best major label or major label album. Best major label album. Who we got All right. here? Mac Miller. Watching movies without well, with the sound off. I always want to say without the sound. Yeah, but no, it's right. watching movies with the sound off. With the sound off. I Man, I don't know about you, but I, I find, here's the thing. <clears throat> to me, here we go, because I always make these. I hate comparing 
like Mac Miller and Eminem because they're both white. I hate doing that because yeah. I, that that goes against. I'll, I'll contradict myself. It's like comparing every white basketball player to Larry Bird, and not everybody played. You know, like Rex Chapman was never like Larry Bird, but he got compared to Larry Bird. You know, you look at black quarterbacks, they always get paired to one another. White mm -hmm. quarterbacks get compared to Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. So mm -hmm. no different than hip hop. Mac Miller, you know, here's the thing. He has his wordplay is somewhat similar in my opinion. I don't know what you think about it, but his wordplay is somewhat similar to Eminem's. I don't know. What do you think about his word? Where, where, where are you um, with, with Mac Miller? Uh, very similar, I would say. Okay. <clears throat> but I wouldn't I wouldn't actually put him in the same category as Eminem. Yeah, he's very clever. He has a lot, a lot of wordplay. Right. He's, he's an excellent MC. But eh, Eminem, I'm not thinking. I don't know if I'm not gonna say he's not at that level. Yeah. I just would not compare him to Eminem. It just yeah, they took cause and apples and oranges. The only thing that's the same mm -hmm. primarily is obviously is, is race. But how that said, why? movies with the sound off mm -hmm. i was su su pleasantly surprised at how nice this album was so just to compare just to go and be contradictory again if i had to compare it to eminem's album <laughs> <laughs> anyway i thought next, it was really good next nominee next nominee j cole born center j cole born center j, j cole is like i don't know i mean i i'm a big fan of j cole's i mm -hmm. understand why he why he's dope in the whole nine mm -hmm. i thought this album was was a pretty good album um but I'm still not blown away like most people are by J. Cole. I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, I, I, he's incredibly dope. He's definitely a, a throwback. M I, I keep saying throwback MC, but I mean, I'm talking about MCs that would have fit perfectly in, in the golden era. Yes. You know, J. Cole would have been one of those guys, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion. I know what you think. Yeah, about I think that. J. Cole, he's one of those main, like, mainstream artists that actually gets it, who mm -hmm. actually knows, who actually realizes what about hip hop in the 90s and, his, 90s and everything and keeping it real, but at the same time, keeping it mainstream, and I, he gets all my respect for that. Yeah, for sure. Mine too. Okay. All right, uh, why don't we go up? with Childish Gambino because the internet. Love this album. I love that album. I mean, Childers Gabino. I mean, here's the thing: dude's a, you know, he's a, he's an actor. You can see him on on that uh, TV show Community. Um, mm -hmm. He's a stand up comedian. You know, mm -hmm. so you can see him doing stand up comedy mm -hmm. wherever. I don't know. Check YouTube. Um, and obviously an MC. And so I didn't know really what to expect going into this thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess the best way I can describe Childers Gambino, in my opinion, is like he's the MC that maybe I thought Charles Hamilton should have been. That that's hmm. just that, that's just kind of kind of kind of my my edge on that. Um, mm -hmm. Nice little wordplay. Uh, you you know he clever lines. I mean you could tell he was a comedian because he has he put some of that mm -hmm. into his MC. Uh, extremely musical. Okay. You know what I mean? So I mean, uh, very good album. Why don't we go with Kanye West? Jesus. I mean, <laughs> is Kanye West like the most polarizing dude now? Period. Like in society, he ain't even MC. It ain't even hip hop or whatever anymore mm -hmm. or fashion. Just polarizing. Period. Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus. In my opinion, I thought every. This is what I told a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Every relevant, not even relevant. Every like like legendary artist. Period. Always has an album like Jesus that Kanye West did. In other words, mm -hmm. what I mean by it is this: Look at Prince. He made Purple Rain, but then he came back with Around the World in a Day. Um, you look at Common. Common put out some, you know, like Water for Chocolate, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Can I Borrow a Dollar, mm -hmm. and the whole nine, you know, but he also put out Electric Circus. That was his, you know, his kind of aberration where he kind of mm -hmm. goes completely left of what they normally do. Okay. okay. Uh, the Beatles put out Sergeant Pepper's Lonely, uh, uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely. Hearts Club Band. Thank you on that. That was kind of their, it turns out like their most relevant album ever. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That that particular album. But that was kind of a left field album for them compared to their other material. Okay. So Jesus kind of fits like that mold for me too. Okay. I thought Jesus in a sense was brilliant. Not sonically. Not sonically, but the statement that he makes and and, and, and as, as left field as he, as he got in this album, I felt it. So... Mm -hmm. Oh, Actually, I enjoy the album as well. Well, why don't we go with Drake? Nothing was the same. Nothing was the same. Okay, Drake. Drake is a guy that you come in wanting to. He, Drake is almost like the freaking A Rod of fucking. Uh, I'm saying the F word. Forgive my language. He's like the A Rod of hip hop to me. You know, everybody wants to hate on this dude mm. because maybe how he looks, how he goes about things. People mm. say he talk greasy about him, but you know, you can't argue with the stats. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. That's Drake. You can't argue with the stats. And here's another thing to it. If you actually got out all of your prejudices of what you might have had a Drake and actually listened to this album, you would be pleasantly surprised at how good this album actually was. That's my opinion. Okay. Well, okay. That's your work. Why don't we go with Jay Z, Magna Carta, Holy nope. Grail. <laughs> hey, Jay Z. Jay Z is Jay Z. I mean, Jay Z mm. gonna put out the album. It's gonna be what it is. It's gonna be Jay Z mm. doing his thing. You know, I, I like the album. Can't argue. I'll, 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 
Well, go ahead. Make make your saying about. I know you have a saying about well, Jay Z. Well, where, where you well, at? Well, I mean, go I'm ahead. not gonna go off on a tangent, but I will okay. say that Jay Z, like you said, is Jay Z. He's gonna he, every time he puts it out, he, he doesn't put anything out there that's going to be garbage. It is going to be hot. It's going to be fire, and this is probably one of the better albums of the year. Okay, you know, and, and the thing about it is too with Jay Z. Well, okay. I'll give you what my my album of the year was, and you know, feel free to chime in at any time too. I, you mm -hmm. know, so I won't be too dominant here, but I, I really believe that the best album of last year, in my opinion, major record label. Tell me, Drake. Nothing was the same. Really, major. Yep. Yeah. Really. I got to give it to Drake. With the I don't mention. Here's the thing too. It's almost like okay, Childish Gambino because of the internet. Because the internet. I actually like that. Almost like neck and neck. It's almost like mm -hmm. it's right up there to me. Okay. But you know. I have to give credit where credit is due. Jay Z, why is it? Why doesn't Jay Z win this for me? And that's because Jay Z's albums are always the same in this way. Sonically is always uneven to me. Sonically, like mm. he can have like okay, suppose he has ten songs in the album, right? Every song is individually dope, mm -hmm. but they play like episodes. They don't play like a continuation mm -hmm. of one album to another. Like, for instance, if you go back to like one of my favorite uh, groups, A Tribe Called Quest, if you listen to their mm -hmm. albums, what made their albums incredible is that they were really cohesive. One track, you know, led to another, so on and so forth. And that's kind of what, that was kind of their appeal. Not to compare, it's the Apples and Oranges comparison comparing Tribe to Jay-Z, but my problem with Jay-Z, although he's made great, exceptional, classic music, I can't look at one, except for Reasonable Doubt, Except for one album, say you know what this plays in a continuation in a way that it's a dope hip hop album. So it, it is a dope album, but I still think his best material is still ahead of him, in my opinion. As an MC though, him spitting Jay Z is Jay Z. There's none better. At, at today he's still the best MC of today, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Today, just of, of of people making music today. But not my all time best, but right now Jay Z is still that dude. Well, I would go with Jay Z for the album of the year, actually for the mainstream album of the year. I would okay. say because I mean I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I will say that Jay Z, you can tell Jay Z pours his heart out when it comes to his albums. That's what I, why Jay Z is such an excellent uh, excellent uh, recording artist. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to say, well, look, he's gonna be changing, and things are gonna be happening. He's just had a kid. Things are changing inside of his head as well, and that's why I love this album. Okay, that sounds good. You know, shout out to Barney's. All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I can't believe you went there too. Anyway, um, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about uh, 2013's top independent album. Okay, right? this is kind of where, like, you know, one of the reasons why we do the Cypher Crew is because, of, like, probably this category in itself, mm -hmm. we 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 really like independent, art, you know, artists and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And cause you get to uh, to me anyway, mm -hmm. you get your most authentic hip hop nowadays mm -hmm. from from like you know um, independent labels. So, with that said, inspect the deck and L7. Centric. I always, I can never say that. We love y'all. They got at us. On, <laughs> they, they, they actually gave us a shout out too on on YouTube or an mm -hmm. uh, email. Uh, uh, you know, seven and esoteric. So we really uh, appreciate that. Zarface. Mm -hmm. um, we thought. I mean, I don't know about you. I thought that album was absolutely off the hook. Mm. I thought the production was on point. We, you know, check our review on this particular album. We thought, you know, the the production was off the hook. Inspect the deck spits like. You know, with fire, man. Like he was still know, hungry. Yeah, just seven L extra put some of their best material out there. Mm -hmm. They all spit. It, it was dope. You know, we really liked it. Okay. All right, why don't we go with Prodigy of Mob Deep and Alchemist Albert Einstein? Well, hey man. All I can say is that this 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 album was so dope. I don't even know where to go with that. Mm -hmm. Prodigy of Mob now, you know Prodigy just got a jail recently relatively <laughs> recently stuff. So you know when you when you in jail, you should be writing your best material. You know what I mean? So okay. apparently he did. And you marry that with Alchemist, who's like on the top of his game right now, production wise. You know, you put out a potential classic album, which I thought this wanted to be in. So, all right. Go Ghostface Killer, Adrian Young, presents 12 Reasons to Die. Yep. Um, yeah, Adrian Young. Dope, dope, dope producer. Uh, 12 Reasons to Die, a uh, concept album. Mm -hmm. uh, if you listen to the production on it, I thought it was incredibly dope. Adrian Young put his ankle in that thing. Mm -hmm. Ghost Face is Ghost. Uh, he spit perfectly over those beats. I really, really dug the album. Great album. Mm -hmm. Killer Mike and LP, Run the Jewels. Oh, I'm saying, yeah, Run the Jewels. Yeah, Run the Jewels. Yeah, Killer Mike LP. I mean, this is the follow up to Killer Mike's um, album. Uh, gosh. What is Killer Mike's album? It, it was so Start dope, you forgot the name of the I album. The album. name of the album, Big Mike's last album. That, that was uh, totally produced by LP. Mm. Forgive me, y'all. Correct me and tell us we slipped in a whole nine. Mm. Uh, but anyways, they came back with the Killer Mike and the LP. They came together as uh, with collaboration with Runner Jewels. Production is dope. I mean, LP, and you've, if you listen to like our shows over the years, LP mm -hmm. is one of my all-time favorite producers, mm -hmm. ex-company flow member. Uh, you know, put put out classic album after classic album as far as production is concerned, and not a bad MC himself. 
right? Probably one of my favorite independent albums of the year. Do Rag Dynasty, 360 Waves. Woo-wee! What do you get when you take Oh No, who is Mad Lib's little brother, and you take Alchemist on a production, and add Planet Asian, mm-hmm. Edge, to spit on them? Incredibly dope album. So with that said, um, I guess I'll give my album to you. You can kind of, you know, give me yours if you want to chime in. All right. Um, I'm going to say the Prodigy and Alchemist album. Mm-hmm. Absolutely incredible. That is my independent album of the year. Although, shout out to Durag Dynasty, 360 Waves. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just real quick with something on 360 Waves. If you actually look at the album cover for 360 Waves, it looks like it's going to be corny. When I, mm-hmm. I almost didn't want to listen to the album come look at the album cover had like Pat Riley mm-hmm. with a do rag on then it had like the 86 Lakers from the cha- 87 whatever year they won that championship mm-hmm. you know do rags I'm like okay they're really gonna have do rag color do rag dance it sounds corny mm-hmm. incredibly dope album but I really have to go and give this to prodigy and uh Alchemist Albert Einstein incredible album. What do you think? I would say do, do Rag Dynasty, 360 Waves. I love yeah, that album. You yeah, you ain't wrong on that. I don't think you're wrong either on that. Just, uh, but anyway, let's move yeah, on. Move on. Uh, we go to 2013's Best Producers. All right? Yeah, this is kind of, you know, this is like, you know, when it comes to producers, that's, that's kind of my baby. And, and we like how MCing is really a, a kid's baby a little bit as far as, you know, what we like to review and stuff. Mm-hmm. But our production, um, number one. Adrian Young. Adrian Young for 12 Reasons, 12 Reasons to Die mm-hmm. uh, that Ghostface spits on. Like starring, I said, starring yeah, Ghostface. Right. Um, hey, you know, Ghostface spits over these beats. These beats are incredible. If you peep, peep Adrian's Young's, you, Adrian Young's music, it's off the hook. He's a dope producer. Mm-hmm. Look forward to a lot of dope stuff coming from him, him in the future. Okay. LP, Killer Mike. Yeah, well, you know, hey, LP, you know, as far as producers are concerned, you know, LP is off the hook. Mm-hmm. You listen to LP, LP is like if you took like the bomb squad from, you know, from Public Enemy and they continue to produce and continue to evolve, their music might sound a, a lot like LPs, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think he, you know, he did an excellent job with Run the Jewels. Okay, well, how about Alchemist? Alchemist from Prodigy of Mob Deep, Albert Einstein. Yeah, um, Alchemist. I mean, you know, I. Alchemist for the second year in a row. He's doing this year what I thought like Static Selector was doing a couple years ago. Static Selector. He was putting out like banger after banger after ba- banger production wise. So Alchemist, you know, with this, the, the production is off the hook. So um, if I'm going to go ahead and give you my winner of that one, sure. I'm going to go ahead and go with Alchemist for Albert Einstein. Alchemist. I mean, if just Alchemist has been on fire production-wise mm-hmm. to me. I don't know. What do you, what do you feel about that? Well, I that? totally agree with you when it comes to Alchemist. As a matter of fact, Alchemist, what I think might have been one of my favorite producers from 2012. Yeah, real talk. I mean, you know, when you factor in this work he's done with Action mm-hmm. Bronson, Durag Dynasty, mm-hmm. that was him. You know, long with no, it was just crazy. He's been, he's been wilding. Yes, sir. All well, right. what are we going to do next? Um, the best MC. Best MC. Last but not least, best MC of the year. Okay, why don't we start with Mac Miller. Mac Watching Miller. Watching movies with the sound off. See, uh, I said it right that time. <laughs> uh, Mac Miller, like I said, I think he's an incredibly mm-hmm. dope MC. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like how he's unassuming. I don't think he makes himself to be up more than what he is, but what he is is, is m- more than sufficient. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, I just I like his wordplay. Mm-hmm. I like his flow. I think Mac Miller's that dude for this year. All right, what about J. Cole? J. Cole, like I mentioned beforehand, J. Cole, as a, just strictly as an MC, and I think my biggest issue with J. Cole's album is kind of almost what happens with Jay-Z's albums. Okay. Production-wise, it's a little uneven, but when you when it comes to the actual lyricism, J. Cole is that dude. There's no, that's what I'm saying, he could definitely fit into a 90s uh, golden era uh, type of MC without, you know, missing a step there. Okay. Okay. Next up is Childish Bang Gambino, <laughs> because of the internet. Yeah, yeah, Childish Gambino is just that dude, again, listen to because because the internet, um, uh, his wordplay is, is very solid, uh, very intelligent, mm-hmm. uh, and I like his flow. And he sings a little bit too in the album too, by the way. And he's not a bad singer. Yeah, and as singer to all of his list of accomplishments, good. I think he's Jamaican because what is he singing? He's he's like <laughs> acting. He's doing stand up comedy. Mm-hmm. He's rapping. Okay, Joey Badass, Summer Nights. Hey, another young dude who could fit in the nineties. Joey Badass, spits fire. Uh, he's the quintessential. Uh, New York MC, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, you look talk about guys who wants to bring new, you know, we've argued about this beforehand about guys who like to sound outside of their uh, outside of their region. Mm-hmm. I think Joey Badass is like New York on purpose, mm-hmm. the way he spits. Okay, 
What about Prodigy of Mob Deep? It's Prodigy. I mean, Pr Prodigy, if you listen to Prodigy's lyricism, I'm talking about, he takes it, take you back to the early Mob Deep days mm -hmm. as far as the way he spits. I mean, it's gangster. It's not like he's hitting you with crazy wordplay or anything like this. Very straightforward. Mm -hmm. you, you listen to his music like right. I did, but I mean, it's, I think it's incredibly dope. Um, but that said, I'll give you my MC of the Year. You can kind of give mm -hmm. me yours. Okay. Uh, the MC of the Year for me uh, is Prodigy. Nope, I have to spits with absolute fire in that joint. You know, I, and, 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 and you agree. I mean, go ahead. Spam. No, I'm, I'm just gonna just probably just put on what what you just finished saying a minute ago. Um, I mean, Prodigy is just that guy who who uses everything to, to his advantage. I mean, his his voice. I mean, like you said, he doesn't use a lot of wordplay, mm -hmm. but he can his his flow has has is his pretty much his own. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He makes it seem so flawless. Yeah, and he maxes out who he is. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? You know, it's not he's not gonna come and try to get you like we keep saying clever lines, stuff like that. Every once in a while, hit you with a punchline here and there. But for the most part, just very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And it's that, hey man, it's New York City gangster rap is what it is. Let's just call it what it is. It's gangster, man. But I mean, just you know, so it's not like kicking pro black or anything like that. It's gangster stuff, but <laughs> it, it's you know, introspective to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of his lyrics and uh, you know, Prodigy. I think just came out hungry and sound like the old Prodigy, H N I C Prodigy. Okay. So, um, yeah, that that's it. So that's where we stand as far as the um, best of last year. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we want to get started. You know, once we get clear up a, little, kind of, a few things we both have going on, we're going to give you all some real good reviews going forward. You know, try to do a few things uh, a little bit differently than we've been doing. I, I think we've kind of talked passively about it and uh, get at some of this new music that, that we've been listening to. We're anxious to kind of give you our overbearing opinions on. You got that right. <laughs> and don't forget, you can hit us up on our email account. We are kidima 44 yep. on gmail.com. You can also hit us up on our Twitter account. We are kidima 44 on Twitter. You can also be our friend on Facebook. We, is, we are lonely. We are the Cypher Crew. Cypher Crew. Shut up. So, hey, by the way, kids, I wore a shirt. Ice Q used to be scary. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't always, you know, are we there yet and ride along? Yeah, you know, this is the old shit. Ice Q. And it's funny, I was thinking, like, the people who, like, put out, like, his records, did, did they listen to Death Certificate or no? Oh, you know, I think about that all the time. All the time. I'm constantly thinking, if these people don't really know who Ice Cube is. No, they don't know. This dude is yeah. real about this close yeah. to Nation Islam. Yeah, no check point. out, yeah, check out, uh, you know, um, Son of Sam or, uh, uh, yeah, um, Wicked. Wicked. Or the or the Predator. I'm sorry, the Wicked was on the Predator album. I'm sorry, yeah, right. I take that Which back. Is dope still. Oh to my day. God! Even I listened to that the other day, by the way. Even though he dissed the Buffalo Bills and that. He um, does, you know, but you know. you know, I'm the one with the fat, mad it's skills that I won't choke like the, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills. Bill. Oh my God! Anyway, <laughs> we're out of here, y'all. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for checking us out in 2013. Hope you guys are checking us out in 2014. We're out of here. Peace. I used to throw something at the time together she's saying she can be with me forever but we still haven't gone to the next level and i just want to undress her every time i caress her i guess i'm just not that clever i know we both want it but i refuse to beg her and we've been there right to the brink of passion but and that's part of the problem i'm not your average run of the mill play a dog slobber and divider and conquering women so i can get on top of them i'd rather make the move together and not sovereign that she's feeling me but she keeps me waiting how patient can i really be she makes me question her intentions is it really me and then she replies oh like silly me me at the front door of her apartment and for the first time ever she calls me marcus gives me a kiss on the lips just to spark this and whispers in my ear she's real picky about apartments but i want you regardless and giggles a little as we fell into the darkness i'm taking my time kissing her neck releasing the body from years of neglect but i still show respect make sure i got the protection to intersect then into a bedroom we crept i look into her eyes and